Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, I'm going to be talking about when the heat could return. It's been very cold for a while now, and I'm going to talk about the chances that we could see a little bit of a warm-up coming up in the near future. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter and join our Facebook group, Weather Freaks. That's going to be in the pinned comment down below. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think we will have an above-average tornado season? or below average tornado season at the end of the year? Let me know in the comments down below and give me a reason why, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. So first things first, we're going to be looking at our teleconnections. So we're going to start out with our AO, which is our Arctic Oscillation. And basically, this is a really good tool to use to see if we're going to have Arctic air somewhere in the United States or if it's all going to be bottled up in the actual Arctic regions of the world. Uh, and when it's negative, we're looking for that to allow it to kind of pour into the United States. And you can see we actually are... Uh, currently in a little bit of a positive phase, but it's actually going to go more positive as time goes on. You can see the dates at the bottom, and then the green line is indicating where they think it's going to go. Uh, the, this is the European Ensemble model, that is, thinks it's going to go. And we can see that it's going to gradually go more positive, and then maybe go a little bit closer to normal, or uh, right there around neutral, towards the beginning of May, but still we're looking to stay positive within that one. Now we're about to move on and we're going to take a look at our NAO, our North Atlantic Oscillation that is, and then our PNA, which is the Pacific North American Oscillation. All right, so we'll get to that in just a moment. And the NAO, this one works pretty much the same way as the AO, uh, where negative means probably colder for the eastern United States, and positive means probably warmer, and you can see we're a little tiny bit negative, and it's going to go more positive as time goes on. And this is pretty much the reason why I'm thinking as we head towards the beginning, you know, first and second week of May, the chance for warmer weather in the eastern United States is going to gradually continue to increase as time moves along here, especially according to the uh, ECMWF ensemble model, which is a European ensemble model. And then here's your Pacific North American oscillation here. This one pretty much works the opposite way. We want this one to go negative for warmer than normal conditions in the eastern United States. If it's positive, that's really encouraging colder conditions to set in for the eastern United States, and then the warmer air will be more over the western United States, which is exactly the pattern we're seeing currently and moving forward. You can see that it's a little bit positive, but it's actually going to go way more positive towards the very, very first couple of days of May, and then it's going to drop back to maybe around neutral. And I'm eyeballing that time frame where it drops back near neutral as the time frame where I'm expecting the potential for a bigger warm-up. So I'm expecting around May 4th through May 6th is the time frame to watch for the next kind of gradual increase in temperatures in the eastern United States. But we could be looking at even more colder than normal conditions around April 30th through the first few days of May there when the PNA is very, very positive. All right, so we're about to move on. And what we're going to do is we're going to move on to our uh, temperature anomalies according to the GEFS. And then we're also going to look at the European Ensemble Model too. We're going to get two different opinions here. All right, so as you can see, we do have our GEFS on screen here. We're starting May 1st. Again, that's a time frame where I'm actually expecting some very cold conditions in the eastern United States. This is a very classic positive PNA pattern. We have very, very warm conditions over the western United States and very cold conditions over the eastern United States. They're very classic positive PNA. And as we move towards about May 4th, which is again around the time frame I'm expecting the potential for a warm up, you can see that the southeast does warm up in the south central United States as well, even some of the Great Plains. The northeast and the Midwest tries to hold on to those cold temperatures, even the mid-Atlantic and the Ohio Valley as well. The slightly colder than normal conditions, but nowhere near as cold as it was before. The GFS is a little less confident in this warm up that I'm potential that I'm talking about that is has the potential to be happening kind of in the first week of May here. This is just a more potential thing. I'm not very confident that we will for sure be having a warm up. There's not a very definitive one, but a lot of people have been asking me when is the next warm up coming. So I'm kind of giving you some brief preliminary information on when I think the potential for that warm up and heat to return to the eastern United States here. So let's move this all the way towards the 7th, and you can see it cools back down on the GEFS for the eastern United States towards the very, very end of the run here. So the GEFS has pretty much colder than normal conditions, winning out all the way through at least the first week of May. Let's move on. We're about to move on, actually, to our European ensemble model and get a second opinion on what it thinks as far as the surface temperatures. Keep in mind these models are not perfect. The teleconnections are going to give us a much better idea than these very, very long-range model guidance outlooks. 
Now taking a look at what the European Ensemble model has to say, you can see here we're starting out again at May 1st, and we're looking at a pretty similar pattern here to what the GEFS model was showing. Very warm conditions in the west, colder than normal conditions in the east, classic uh, positive PNA look right here, like I was saying before. But here's the difference, let's take a look at May 3rd here on this European Ensemble model, and look at that. The warmer than normal conditions start to creep eastward, and we even see those blues showing up for the west coast. That's classic of kind of a, of a negative PNA starting to set up. We get those colder than normal conditions right along the west coast there. That's going to be kind of the determining factor of if we're actually going to see a warmer than normal pattern set up for the eastern United States at any point. But we can see the, the plains are actually well above average as well. 8 to 14 degrees above average there. Very, very far above normal, actually. And then as we take a look at the 4th, it creeps its way all the way to the East Coast. But similar to the GFS, but not quite as extreme, we do see the Northeast, the New England states, and the Midwest hold on to some of that colder air. But in this case, the Mid-Atlantic and the Ohio Valley actually do become warmer than normal here by the time we're into the first week of May. Keep in mind, it's a pretty mo moderate range to maybe even long range outlook here. Again, this was just a very, very common question and people are very, very tired of the cold at this point. So I think this is pretty much the topic that most people are wondering about. Let's take it to the fifth and you can see that the Southeast and a lot of the Eastern and Central United States hold on to that warmth, maybe with the exception of the very, very far, far Northern areas there starting to get colder than normal. And then similar to the GFS as well here, we see that cold air set back into the central and northeastern United States by the 7th. So that's going to be very, very interesting to see how that plays out. Will we see that warm-up take over, kind of like the European model says, or will we see it be very subtle like the GFS says? Nevertheless, this seems like our biggest chance that I can see in the foreseeable future for a long-lived warm-up. By long-lived, I mean at least a few days of warm air in the eastern United States. Uh, so this is the next upcoming chance for that heat to return to the eastern United States. Now, here's the difference, because a lot of people might be wondering, like, how different actually is this? Is this a big warm-up, or is this pretty minor? Well, here's the European model, uh, the 500 millibar heights on April 30th, and then here is the heights on May 3rd, and you can see it's pretty much polar opposites the way it's set up there, and that's going to really be what leads to that chance of the warm air returning, or I guess the Gulf air would be a better description, the Gulf hot air returning up into the United States and maybe creeping its way up into the mid-Atlantic and some of the more central United States with those warmer than normal conditions that a lot of you have been wanting for sure as of late. What we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at some of NOAA's Climate Prediction Center forecasts here. We're going to take a look at their May outlook real quick and then we're also going to look at their 8 to 14 day outlook. All right, so here we are, and we're looking at their May outlook first off, and you can see they are calling for a more average, near average area for a lot of the central and eastern United States, especially the interior regions, not the coastal regions. This is very interesting. Keep in mind they came out with this on the 16th, though, which is pretty outdated, and they will update this in the coming week or so, usually right around May 1st would be when they update this, and we're going to see a big change most likely, uh, but I do expect that this will be pretty close to how the look looks for the, for the May forecast from direct weather as well. I'm actually really liking this outlook so far. Here's their 8 to 14 day outlook, and this is a day old. We're seeing model guidance trend towards a warmer period here for the beginning of May, and this was their outlook for how the first week of May would look, May 1st through 7th. And you can see that they did call for those colder than normal conditions for the northeastern United States, as well as portions of the Ohio Valley, the mid-Atlantic, and the Midwest. But the southeast does get a little bit of a warm-up there. And I think when they update this and it becomes the 6 to 10 day outlook, we're going to see a lot more warmth for the eastern United States compared to this look and possibly some colder air for the west coast. Uh, obviously, their 8 to 14 day outlook isn't as updated as their 6 to 10 day outlook, so we will expect to see some changes at least with this outlook here from what they're showing on this. Now for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you prefer stormy weather or sunny weather this time of year? And Gary Green said, I love the stormy weather with lightning and thunder. When I used to live in Houston, we got it almost every day and it was awesome. However, since I've moved back to California, we don't really get storms, which is a bummer. And that sounds like a big bummer. Hopefully you can travel and go see some thunderstorms or maybe you'll get a rare California thunderstorm, but I can't agree anymore. Actually, thunderstorms to me this time of year are very peaceful. A lot of people, you know, it's the opposite effect, but it's always been a very peaceful feeling for me. I know a lot of people sleep easily during thunderstorms, so it's kind of like that for me.
Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.